Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Coast Corner. This should be the finale of the main K2 mission number one. I am joined today by only the Imperator say hello. Hello, audience. And I, of course, am your host, Cody McCloris. Unfortunately, our lovely companion, uh, Bunker, could not join us due to sudden unforeseen events. That hopefully won't be that big a deal. Rectified. Yeah, hopefully we can we can survive the current ordeal without him. Yeah, the, uh, the ensuing onslaught that <laughs> that may or may not be this rousing finale. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, so this is this is going to be the culmination of our hard work uh, and and many hours of planning and coordination and attempted scheduling. Uh, uh, but uh, with this finale, I feel like it being the t technically the first finale we're doing on this channel. I mean, we did do uh, Kill the Mao, which was a, a mini series. Yeah, yeah, which was, <laughs> which was, which, which was like a mini series webisode, or two webisode mini series, of us <laughs> testing tanks until we found one. I think in what the second episode, yeah. uh, where we finally started finding tanks that could actually do it, uh, and. We ended up finishing that out in the same two day span. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think. Certainly anticlimactic. <laughs> very, very much so. This will not be the same result. Uh, no, I have made sure of that. We have, we have one hell of a campaign for you guys today. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Don't forget that uh, if you do enjoy what we do here, uh, don't forget to like comment and subscribe uh figured i just put that out there before we get started uh we do have a lot coming up we have a lot of uh new stuff that we're trying to get out and trying to get hammered away so that it is proper and ready for your viewing pleasure uh there's a lot working in the background uh so hopefully we can get everything off the ground and uh running in that regard so that we can deliver to you guys new stuff that hopefully you'll enjoy and we enjoy as creators and attempting to create it. Uh, but yes, uh, our, our rousing climactic finish today uh, of the K2 plotline, or well, main K2 plotline. Uh, this is going to be uh, significantly difficult i've been made aware of uh due to the fact that this was <laughs> originally going to be a three person or well technically four character campaign uh this is going to be extensively difficult for just myself and sir boston brook uh to complete so hopefully you guys enjoy it we did leave off a bit of a cliffhanger last time so, uh, all will be revealed, in a way. So. Yes, indeed. <clears throat> so. Uh, let's see, where we, I think, I think we start. Hmm. I think we start with an empty conference room. Right, an, an empty JPCU conference room. <clears throat> um. Nobody, nobody's there yet, and then I think there's like uh, the the door opens, and our contemporary handler, Mister Wright, uh, walks through the door with a, a middle of a folder under his arm, just like usual, and he he kind of walks in, like expecting like somebody to be in the room already, and then he like he sees that it's you know, empty. And, Completely uh, empty. He's kind of like disappointed. He decides and he puts his uh, folder on the table and 
takes his seat and looks at the clock and you know looks at his watch and taps his foot in the ground and kind of waits. And then I think we cut to like in a, in a well, I would assume Helsing sleeps in his platinum sphere, right? Yes. That's where he rests, he meditates, uh, he confers with the martyrs, mm. being he is a champion of said martyrs, uh, which are divine beings that uh, basically have rule and sway over the course of nature. Uh, the, he would probably be uh, in his sphere uh, having a conference with said uh, beings, at the moment, uh, trying to stave off whatever uh, manifestation has taken up residence inside of his being, and uh, yeah, well, so really think... his yeah no his physical being. Yeah, so I, I think that we I think that there's probably some like like prayer chamber or. Uh, like like where where Helsing would confer with his bosses essentially these multiversal Basically. deities. Uh, so pretty much right now he's just gonna be uh trying to rid himself of this. Uh, I guess you could say growth that has taken up residence. Uh, either growth or parasite would work here. Uh, as his eyes are completely black, uh, and uh, he he's kind of like fighting for control over it, uh, just over physical action. Uh, of course the black uh, oozer Icker is trying to make him leave the sphere and uh, cancel this. Uh, meeting with his bosses, but he is trying to force himself to stay in the sphere uh, and get kind of some extra dimensional help in ridding himself of said uh, Icker. Okay. Yeah, so I think basically Helsing's like the, 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 the dark like ooze from his, his eyes. Um, are there, there are like the like the the pulsating, like wriggling like black tendrils that like leak from his eyes under his like skin and stuff, <laughs> and are like kind of corrupting the rest of his like his head. Yes. And so I'm gonna make some rolls. Shoot, yeah, we have a nice top. dice tower this time around. So. Yes, I'm not using the dice tower. I tested it out today. <laughs> no. No, yeah, I do not trust the dice tower right now. Tower. Okay. Endurance. Okay. All right. So that's a six. So that's a preliminary pass. We're gonna keep that dice there. Uh, that's gonna be my first attempt at resistance. Uh, so it's trying to hold sway over me, but like I, I can fight its motions. I can fight its urges and motions, uh, and whatnot. And as, as. I confer with them on what like actions I should take as to remove it. Uh, I'm gonna make another check here. Uh, that's an eight. So yeah, I'm by by the the second check. I am able to fully fight off its uh, its attempted. Uh, actions as to force me out of this chamber. Uh, and I'm going to ask my Daedic bosses uh, what I should do as to remove it. So I think we see uh, Helsing kind of like like crawling towards um, like the whatever like specialized like prayer chamber like meditation chamber he uses to speak with his his overlords his bosses yes and the, <clears throat> the, the Icar is trying to like convince him to like stop it trying to slow him down turn his like organs off and trying to just like keep him from 
from getting in there. And I think yes, um, it takes a great deal of effort. <laughs> but I think that so can... so it would start out. It would start out. He's at his desk, uh, and uh, like he 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 starts to get like a headache almost, and and it's it's different because he usually doesn't get those. And uh, and I and I hold my head in my hand, and uh, I I kind of like rub my head like you would a normal headache. And, and I start to hear uh, these voices, and they're telling me, uh, avoid the sphere, uh, don't listen to them, uh, so on and so forth. As I, as I kind of like, as, it, as the pain like grows more and more, I, I like fall out of the chair and start to like try to stumble my way towards the sphere, because I know that this isn't me speaking. This isn't, this isn't me talking sense to myself. So I'm going to uh, slowly and surely, with this pain growing in, and the vignette closing in around my eyes, uh, make my way into the sphere, uh, resisting its movements, tooth and claw, uh, quite literally clawing my way into the sphere. So, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make my way up the uh, slight, maybe three or four steps to get inside of uh, the sphere, <coughs> and uh, request an audience with my uh, with my bosses. Okay, so and uh, tell them that it is urgent and I do need guidance. I think it probably takes like 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 ten fifteen minutes for you to crawl your way into the like meditation chamber um but i think you do eventually like you know like literally just like on, like hands and knees crawling in yeah you know, probably some form of unimaginable uh, agony yes you, this is an ethereal pain it's yeah, not it's a, like normal, a normal physical pain yeah um, this is an eldritch kind of pain <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not something you can just it's not something you just kill yourself <laughs> and then come back from. Yeah. Um, uh, I wish you, I wish that was the solution for this. <laughs> yeah, but you've actually you've probably tried this over the past couple of days and found that it just has, like, has kept with. Oh it. yeah, there's there's a couple of bodies in here. <laughs> yeah. This pile up in one of the corners of the room with like several dead Helsings. Yes, there's a pile of ash where I had to burn the bodies. Yeah. And uh, so. You, but you do eventually like, cr like crawl into this meditation chamber, and you this get giant to, like, platinum the, sphere. Yeah, yeah, you get to like like the center of this like s super fancy. So I think like the in the interior of this meditation chamber is all of like, you know, like the Silver Surfer. Yes. It's like, like yeah. him, but like a very sphere. Like, so yeah. You're in like a domed room. Right, in, in part of this part of the sphere, because it's very like a TARDIS, so it's bigger on the inside type of thing. Yeah. So part of the sphere, and you're in this meditation chamber, and the floor I think is like like matte textured, like like almost like a steel, but it's not. You, can, you know, it's not steel. Yeah. Um, but the, the ceiling and, and the then it's like big dome, and yeah. the the walls. And, and then the when I are like moving liquid metal. Yeah. And then when you get in the center of it. And you like smack your hand down and like inside this like special circle of like sigils and fancy glowing lines and stuff that the martyr set up. Um, part of the yes. ceiling like starts like pulsating. Like um Yes. Ever seen like the ferro flu, the, the magnetic liquid like mercury or whatever? Yeah. Like, like the spikes pop yes. up. It's like that. And, like and then when I uh, when I when I smack my hand down and they like the the, the the, the transition into uh, this, this uh, extra dimensional realm begins uh, when the transformation inside the sphere begins of being in one place going to this extra dimension uh, the floor like around me falls away so that I'm just on this circular bit of ground and it falls away to reveal a uh, kind of like uh it, it looks like space almost but it's not space it's 
it, it's there, but it's not. If that makes sense, it's 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 somewhat paradoxical in nature. It, it's kind of like a Schrodinger's uh, area or radius, mm. uh, where it's it's ground, but it's not. Uh, like there's a heavy feeling of walkability, but you like seeing it, you you feel like you can't walk on it. Uh, it looks like something where if you were to step out into this, you would just cease to exist. Uh, and that's that's anywhere around the circle that I'm in, where the runes are, and uh, they they start glowing. Yeah. So then, uh, you're kind of in this like weird, like you've been transported to some alternate reality or pocket dimension or you know you have no idea how it really works you don't ask any questions yes and i think um as you're 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 in this like pocket dimension you're in this like circle of glowing lines and stuff and weird like not quite real but also real at the same time like weird uh domed like conference room essentially yes Uh, i think there is uh, like a voice behind you, almost. Uh, and by the time they get there, uh, there's uh, a black, the the black icker, almost. It, it's not the same being. It's not the same being that's uh, overtaken my my head. Uh, but uh, a black liquid like starts leaking from my eyes. And it's it's not that it's the the uh, being itself. It, it's a byproduct of the being. Yeah. Uh, as as my vision goes completely black, so I cannot see anything. And I think there is. All I know is that I made it in. I I have there. full motor control. Yeah. I I am in immense pain, and uh, my eyes are leaking something. But it, I know that it's not the being because the being has to stay contained inside of me to stay alive. So I know that it is not. Uh, it, it's very parasitic in nature. Uh, so I, I I would know that this isn't the the parasite itself leaving my body. It's a byproduct. So I know that this dimension would be safe, and it's not going to get corrupted by this eldritch horror that is currently taking up residence. Yeah, so I think uh, you're you're kind of you're, you're blind. You can still like feel like your 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 body is still still there. You can still like tell you're not like moving or anything. Um, yeah. And then um, there's a how can I describe this? There's a sudden, definitely. Actually, no, maybe a perception check. See how well you know this voice because you might not have met this person yet okay nine so i do know this voice so this voice is you you hear and a what you would imagine to be like an an angel almost like okay so it's very like uh, a soothing voice almost Yes, it's very soothing, very um, feminine, and it sounds okay. Like, like even even you, you can tell it, um, this voice isn't like trying to sing. It sounds like a nicer song than it, anything you've ever heard, like yeah. in the in the mortal realm. And then you feel like you yeah. feel a sudden like hand on your shoulder that kind of like turns you around. It's very very gentle uh and it it turns you around and the the voice is now of course like speaking you know towards you you can hear it better yeah and you can hear uh this you know entity whatever uh like speaks to you and she's like "Ah," like dr helsing you really need to be more careful with this sort of thing i'm gonna uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, look up, because I'm currently kneeling, uh, 
and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna beg them for for uh for an end to this, like uh like a solution, uh, and it's basically going to be uh just just please please make this suffering end. And she, you kind of feel like, you, you feel um like like pressure on your your eyes, which is probably relatively painful considering like there was already a lot of pressure in there. From, like, so the, like, the so at this point, I uh, up until up until that, I would have been like trying to get up onto my knees to try and gain some balance, to try and like uh, uh, regain my bearings and whatnot, and try to get to stand. Uh, but that would have brought me just right back down, clutching my head onto my, uh, elbows and knees. You hear the, uh, a swishing of, like, fabric, and almost like a, 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 a nice breeze blowing through the, the, the leaves and branches of the tree, and it's like a warm, kind of gentle wind. Yes. And you feel, uh, like... A brushing motion under your your eyes, under like your eye sockets, and um, then you can you can see suddenly, pretty much. Okay. And you are looking at, uh, probably like the the best looking like you would kind of human woman you've ever seen in your life, and she's um dressed in very intricate uh like vine clothes almost okay and she wears a crown of like like roses but the thorns are still in there like they aren't like removed so i'm going to uh as soon as my eyesight comes back up i'm going to look up and am i still like in an immense amount of pain no you feel you feel totally fine Oh, I'm totally fine. Yep. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like shakily regain my bearings, stand, compose myself, and uh, uh, turn to this uh, being I can only assume as to be Mother Nature. Yep. That's and I am going to uh, give give a deep bow. As, uh, as, as I greet her and, uh, give my deepest of thanks and, uh, remind her that I am, I am ever in her debt. Uh, and she kind of, like, uh, like, smiles, uh, warmly, kind of, like, waves her, her hand, like, to dismiss, like, that comment. She's like, no need, my child. It's my job to be a healer. If we wanted you dead, we have some several people. To once do again, that for. once again, I thank you. You have ailed me of what was plaguing me, and if I had not gotten here in time, I feel like it would have corrupted me entirely. Like judging by the presence I sensed, it was already very close. What we are facing, me. what we are facing now, is tougher than anything we've ever seen before, and that's to say the least. We face an eldritch horror that is able to seamlessly break reality and move freely throughout what is and is not in our dimension. And uh, she kind of like she 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 was of course kneeling down previously. Um, to like help you, uh, and she she stands to her full height, and she's you're six foot five, so she's probably like seven foot five, eight foot tall. She's she's big. And she uh, dwarfs me. <laughs> yeah, she's she's big, and um, she kind of like looks down uh, at you, and uh, she's like, yes, I'm familiar with your current conflict. The over-deities are not to be trifled with, but plenty of mortals have tried their hands at summoning them. I ask you, Mother Nature, 
I know I have already asked a lot, but I must ask you one favor. Please, confer with Creo and Father Fate so that you can make a dimension that we can banish this Eldritch Horror to. One that it cannot escape. And if we should fail, then I think it would be best to do away with our dimension altogether. Because if we fail, then it is it is lost. And she kind of uh, nods her head, and uh, then she kind of like steps backwards out of the the radius of the you know quote unquote like spell, and like disappears behind the the veil of like space essentially, and. Uh, you, you know, like the projection ends, and you are back, sitting in that room of the sphere. So I'm going to, uh, as soon as everything goes back to normal, I'm going to rush out, uh, to the nearest garbage can, <laughs> and <laughs> and I'm going to vomit at acceptable level. Okay, yeah, you, like, stumble out of this, you know, weird trans-dimensional room. And, yes. Like, very, very hangover rushing to the bathroom-esque. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, pretty much vomit up <laughs> a black ichor that was remaining as a byproduct of this creature. Yeah, so you've rid yourself of the rest of that, essentially. Uh, very good. Uh, I'm going. I'm assuming that there's a coffee machine in my office, so okay, I'm going this to. Is, this is the thing that uh, I wasn't going to uh, reveal. Okay. Just uh, yeah. Hold hold on. Give me un momento. Sure. Huh. Huh. Uh. So I'm going to. Uh, exit from the sphere and uh, eject what black ichor and slime is uh, left and uh, I'm going to basically uh, will a coffee machine from uh, from the sphere yeah, so you, you, you walk out and you just kind of like think like I want coffee now, and then I I um, need coffee. Yeah, and then like whatever like countertop you have already in here, um, a coffee machine just like slurps out of the wall and appears on the counter. Ah, uh, very good. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna walk over and start the brewing process as I as I uh, sh shakily uh, materialize a mug. Coming from the same wall next to the, uh, 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 next to the coffee machine. Well, I think because and uh, like super weird, you know, reality bending material. I think you will a mug to appear, and it like slurps out of the coffee machine, and then coffee <laughs> appears in the mug. <laughs> like it looks uh, just how I like it. And then it like becomes coffee. Just how I like it. <laughs> yeah. Ethereal and possibly there or not. Yeah, wall coffee. Uh, so, uh, I'm going to, with a shaky hand, uh, pick it up and start downing the cup of coffee. Yeah, so you, you keep downing the cup of coffee and... And it just doesn't run out? Yeah, it never runs out. You just keep, <laughs> keep chugging however long you want because this stuff can make itself. Perfect. Itself. Perfect. Uh, so, this all being over, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the coffee cup down, but still hold it by the handle, uh, and take a deep breath. <sighs> and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna compose myself and uh, leave my chambers. Uh, none too plus today. Today's already been too rough of a day for me. Uh, it, it's, let, let's be honest, it's been a rough week for me. Uh, 
yes. So, yeah. by this point, uh, Jason is very, very much so uh, unpleased uh, as I as I make my way to cons- conference room. Yeah, so you, you make your way to the to the conference room and uh, our temporary handler, Mr. Uh, well, Agent Matthew Wright, he's there. And uh, at this point... Uh, so I'm going to take my usual seat. Yeah, your, your uh, normal seat. And I think Foster Brick is already there. But like, you know, like you're like you you're used to walking into this conference room and seeing Foster Brook and McLafferty talking about stuff and, you know, yeah. like chatting it up and drinking tea together and stuff, talking about like, current events. But there is like, like you walk in here and there is right on one end of the table and then Foster Brook at the farthest end of the other side. And they are like not like recognizing each other's existences. They're you know doing their own thing. Boss has got like a nice book he's reading, and you know that's that's the end of that. <laughs> so I'm going to sit down and uh, just silently just staring, stare like zone out. So when you when you walk in, uh, Mister Wright, you know he he picks up. He's like, ah, wonderful. We can begin, and he um, clears his throat. And he, uh, like, opens up the manila folder, and he uh, slides over a satellite image of a, what appears to be a section of the, of some woods out in Mississippi. All right. And he, uh, you know, like, slides over this image, and in one part of, like, the, this, like, forest... There's like a, a there's like a, a a road, a single dirt road that crosses through part of this this woodland, and uh, there is like a small complex of like buildings, like in a clearing of this woods. There's a big red circle around this the that like complex, and uh, then right slides over another photo, and it's a like like a, a close start like close to the ground satellite image. Of, All right. Uh, what appears to be like a hunting lodge of some kind. Oh. And there are uh, like big log, uh, like colonial style, <coughs> like lo- like tree log walls built around this property. Okay. And um, right, uh, like passes this image around, and he's like. So for the past few days since this, uh, since, the, since the order to investigate the Chamberlain properties was made by Dr. Helsing, uh, JPCU uh, forces have been engaged in a siege with uh, what are believed to be cultist operatives uh, that have taken over, or that took over, large sections of the woods. And right. this lodge seemingly uh, acting as their their base of operations and they uh set up makeshift walls and have been you know warring with uh, both jpcu and scp foundation agents since the uh order has been given so probably like a week at this point like three or four no it's been like five days haven't it five six days and uh then right hands over a third uh, satellite image, and it it's just like a close up of like a, a like the, the the woods, and there's a big glowing circle uh, over where the lodge property used to be. Okay. And uh, right says, and this is the most recent satellite image taken. Um, couple of hours ago and you oh. notice that uh, <clears throat> we could no longer see is there a barrier in... is there a barrier in... is there a barrier in play it's like yes we believe the uh, cult set up a number of sigils on the trees and... I mean for us it's like oh well 
no, that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a the, the cult appears to have trapped themselves in the the property. Hold on, your mic keeps cutting out. I'm gonna need your that. Yeah, your your mic keeps cutting out. So so yeah, please re uh, reiterate for me. All right, yeah. So there is um. So Wright explains that there is a magical barrier set up by the cult to trap themselves in the property and keep everyone out. So not even um like like, like no. No matter can pass through the barrier through either side, and they, uh, JPCU believes that the cult set up a number of complicated sigils during the nighttime, carving them into trees and rocks around the property, and then when they finished like the the ring of runes, they activated automatically and <coughs> set off the mm. uh, like barrier. And they haven't been able to get anyone inside or hear anything. There have been no attacks, you know, nothing like that have been the usual pattern for the past while. And uh, so they've decided to All send right. in uh, the two of us. I have a plan. I can attempt to break through the barricade, if only for a temporary amount of time. Give me a squad of the best men from each company. We will go in with said all squadron. And I'll attempt to break the sigils on the trees and rocks and whatnot. And bring down the barrier indefinitely. In the meantime, we will set up our own barrier around the around corresponding barrier that they have set up. Evacuate the nearby areas. Make sure that any civilians within... Oh, let's just say... A 300 mile radius... Are out. We cannot take chances on this one. Okay, yeah, so, uh, Wright's like, of course, I'll, you know, let the, like, the teams and stuff know, um, and he says that the, uh, the, like, car to bring <coughs> us to the property is awaiting our arrival, uh, in the garage. Oh god, here comes the ping again. Oh god, why is it at 600? You should be back. Oh, no. Mm. Uh. Uh. Huh? Uh. I think we're good. Alright, hopefully. Alrighty. Uh. Yeah, so he says that the. The car is in the basement, awaiting our arrival. Very good. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make my way down there. Unless Boston Brook has anything to say. No, I think he's he's uh well I mean I think Helsing is rather unapproachable at the moment, and Boston Brook picks up on that, of course. Uh, and he's just you know silently doing his own thing. He probably misses. Battlecock's, um, like, calming... Friendly things. presence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, he follows you to the garage anyway. Alright. Uh, well, before we go, I'm going to go to my quarters and, uh, open up a drawer in my desk, uh, that has a, a quite large tone in it and uh the the 
the language on front of is otherwise readable to anybody else. Uh, it's just that much, or that anyone to comprehend. Uh, and uh, the tome basically sit, like is a warning. It says a warning on the front. Uh, that is, like, this book contains powerful magic, uh, that is only to be used in the of emergencies. Uh, I'm going to be grabbing that and putting it in my satchel. And prepare myself to head out. Okay, sure, yeah, you tuck that into your satchel and uh, head down into the garage. Yes. You know, the car is <coughs> waiting there for you. Uh, we all get in. The drive takes like four or five hours probably, so it's, it's, it's midday by the time we get there. Yes. Um, and yes, they, they, the car pulls up right to the GPCU's mobile command center. And it's only, it's only a couple dozen yards away from this barrier because they know that nobody can get out through it either, so they're not afraid to to approach it and be near it. Um, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, looks like it is time to act. All right, I'm going to go to the... the current uh field commander I ask for a status report uh you find the you know commander of this site he says that they have set up the secondary ba a barrier and and soldiers have been like scouting parties have been sent out around the, the the cultist barrier to try and find the sigils um but mm. none have been like found yet but it's only been like an hour or two um but yeah, the secondary battery is up, and the evacuation measures are still ongoing, but are, like, probably halfway done by now, if not, like, 40% done. Okay. <sighs> Alright. <clears throat> Gather me the best men you can buy. Both companies. We're going to be going in with a small strike force, hopefully dispel evil. Which we have been playing. Uh, he's you know salutes and walks off and alerts uh, the like special teams and the various units. Hmm. So I'm going to uh, take out my torch, the uh, barrier that the cult has set up, and. Uh, I'm going to uh, take out like a small, like pocket knife that I would have had on me, or actually no, I'm going to take out a story weaver hmm. and start uh, carving sigils while I look at the book uh, as to which sigils to carve to temporarily temporarily open up a doorway into the barrier, uh, and I'm going to look at a spell of. Basically, a spell of door. That uh, <laughs> a spell of door. <laughs> well, I mean, in its in its basis or like most comprehensible, or comprehensible form, uh, it is a spell that can open up uh, a hole to any mat material substance or field. Uh, it is literally just an entrance spell that. I would have, I would guess, would only be used for like parties, as like a party trick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, until now, uh, I'm going to start carving the proper sigils to the ground, uh, <clears throat> and start the, uh, the, res uh. The ensuing uh, incantation to have the sigils take effect. Sure, make the uh, this... intelligence check. Alright. Uh, the success in this will determine the duration. 
So uh, I'm going to call out and make sure that the squad and bomb near me when this take effect. We got a minute. <laughs> we got a minute to get in. You have one second. <laughs> oh, God. No, so, um, so yeah, so you uh, scribbled these, uh, like, probably, like, uh, you know, like a, a rock or something, and you carved yeah. this, these sigils into these, like, you know, tiles of slate or whatever. Yeah. And you, like, you have this, your, your arms full of rocks, and you just like chuck them at the barrier all at once and they kind of yeah. like land in like a haphazard manner um and then the the, the, the ruins glow and uh, uh a human sized archway like like lifts out from off the ground of this barrier all and, right uh yeah boston brook you know he, he runs through immediately he's not he, he has no fears literally um so he just runs through. okay um, but the, the runes are, like, uh, already, like, flickering and sparking, and the, the barrier is, like... I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna turn to the, uh, the team, and I'm gonna tell them to go f as I try to at least hold it open, or, like, keep it open. Uh, uh, sure, make me, uh, an endurance check. Alright. That is another one, so we got another minute. Oh, great. You know what that means. Oh, I don't like it. Time to roll on my favorite table. No. The best table. This is not good. Why would it give me two ones when I need to hold this open so I can get through? Uh, 3,477. Lovely. Okay. 3,477. Uh, huh. Okay. So you try to hold this gate open for, you know, a, a, a bit longer. And you suddenly find that uh, half of your body is now uh, a mirror. Uh, is it a reset time, Jason Van Helsing? Thing. Uh, no, it it only lasts for like a couple minutes. Lasts for about four minutes. But I need to get through. <laughs> the gate is is very like very weak, um, and you know that like unless you want to waste another like fifteen minutes remaking all of those like sigil scrolls, like the stones and stuff like that, there's not going to be enough time for all those guys to get through. Alright, I'm going to go through. Alright, so you rush through. Uh, the gate remains open. You know, for like a... a uh, can, we, can we at least get a couple of guys in? Uh, so, you're like, okay, so you, you make it through, and you're like, alright, let's see if we can't get, you know, somebody through. And uh, the first guy, who is the um, one of the guys from like the mansion a attack that you oh. had them go through, uh, he okay. he's the first one to react to you like yelling this, changing commands, changing orders, and he lunges forwards. And as he like reaches the the archway, the barrier falls back down into place, and it cuts him in half. Oh. Oh. So half of his, like, the front half of his, his torso, like, his whole body, like, falls through uh, to our side, and then, like, the back half of him is, like, leaning, leaning against the barrier, like, sliding down. Oh. All of that. 
and then your body returns to normal, and you're no longer um, half, of, half of a mirror. Uh, he survived that. Yeah, and you also can't see back through the other side of the the barrier. This is fine. We'll just make our way then. All right. So, uh, let's see. So we know where we're going, pretty much. We know the direction of. This. We got eight hundred. Eight hundred. Nine ninety nine. Oh my God. Jesus. Wait, wait, maybe. Uh, coming back down. Nope, back up. Three ten. Oh. Seven. Uh, why today? Why today? Five six. <coughs> Three sixty. Why did this happen? Seven hundred one. Oh boy. Oh no. Uh, uh, 920. 900. 915. Uh. Oh boy. No, it's my. Nope, no, never mind. It was, it was good for a second. I'm literally trying to cut down on. I. Phone off a turd. Laptop should be heavy. Who boy? That I'm... I I switched to the <laughs> ah lovely. Okay. Uh, I switched to the signal that was being used as much. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So apologies for the technical difficulties. Um. Yes, M many apologies <clears throat> for the for the high rubber bandage and ping. I have probably sounded like a robot for a good portion there. Uh. Uh. Yeah. So. Uh, <clears throat> you, we uh. We, we are. Up. We are in. Yeah, we're inside. In the, we're in the 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 this wood, the, these woods. We know where we're going. So we make our way, and after probably, you know, the 15, 20 minutes, we uh, walk through a clearing of these these heavy, uh, thick wooding, and we see the uh, property, this hunting lodge, um, and we notice that the, the, the big set of, like, makeshift walls that the cultists had set up to, like, withstand the siege... They have all been demolished. They're all in ruins, in pieces, you know, scattered about on the ground. Um, but the building is still intact. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so, the the company has done a good job sieging this build. So that is good to hear. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Uh, I'm gonna flip a coin. Cool. That wasn't very much of a flip. I am unsure on where the coin has gone. It's hidden in the fog of war, I think. <laughs> um, no matter. So, uh, we approach from the uh, the west. So there is like a a dirt road that leads, you know, 
through both sides of this hunting lodge. Ah, uh, yes. See it now. <laughs> yeah. I just noticed that there is, in fact, a dirt road. Yes, there is a there is a dirt road, and uh, part of the the wooden gate that the cultists had set up is still standing. So, like the big wooden door is still there, ah. uh, but it is, of course, open, and it's like, like, the, but the rest of the wall is gone. So. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna turn to boss. Say now we're never. And he uh, turns to you and he goes, "Tally ho, sir!" And he just starts speed walking towards the the property, towards the hunting lodge. I'm gonna follow suit, not necessarily speed walking, but following behind him. Alrighty, yeah. So we walk through the uh, this big this big wooden door kind of like squeezing between the where it's open where it's where it's like you know creaked open a little bit and uh so this there are three buildings connected by the second floor so okay. uh pick pick a building left middle or right Get a... Middle's the biggest, by the way. Huh? The middle building is the biggest. So you can pick, you know, left, right, or middle. Uh, right is the, the biggest. Middle is... Oh, no, right, right's the smallest. Middle is biggest. Whatever number two would be. Can I... I think I can roll a D3. Thanks to the wonders of the internet. Eh. I was gonna say, uh... It can just be... Uh, flip a coin. Uh, I but we one, so I'll say that that's the leftmost building from our perspective. Okay. Anyway. So there are uh, two two doors that we can we can see, uh, one facing west and one facing south. Okay. Go with. I'll say that's a south facing door. Alright. Don't worry about these dice. These are broken. <laughs> and I can't delete them. Um so let's see. Um so you go to the uh, this this door. Uh, make me a perception check. Perception check, you. Yes. Ten. Oh, and it got lost. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's do that again. Oh, went. Still a pass, isn't it? Need my note. Okay, so Van Helsing perception eight, yes. Yeah. So as you open this door, it's it's a it's a it's a, a big wooden door you would expect to have and see in like a uh, or like a ranch or like a workshop area. Okay. And as you you creak it open because it's unlocked, you notice um, when you look in the floor. And there is a faint red glow coming from somewhere behind the door. Okay. So. Really quick. I'm gonna. Flip through. Uh, this tome and see what I've got in my. Yeah. So what are you looking for? Uh, just in general. And, like, 
reg in regards to what? Uh, spells and incantation. In in like in, in regards to, like a red glow or like. Uh no, just in general. The, you're talking like. Like every spell. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and cast an identify identification spell. Ah. To see what's glowing on the other side of the store. But I'm just trying to take inventory. Currently. Okay. So you cast identify spell. Yeah, make me an endurance check, sure. Give me well, actually, you wouldn't need to because you can just like sense magic. So you would know what kind of magic this is. Oh, uh, what kind of magic is this, Cody? This is. Um, I believe destruction magic is abjuration, right? Pretty sure. All right. So yeah, it's it's abjuration magic, specifically a form of advanced pyromancy. Does not sound. Uh. Right. I'm gonna put away my tome, uh, and draw my story weaver and my rail lock. Cool. I'm gonna prep myself side of the door and uh, wait on Boston to yeah he Boston Brook he draws you know he draws life's limit waits for your order I'm gonna nod to him and Boston Brook kicks down the door and now I need you and him to make agility checks for me Agility of five. Agility of five, okay. Let me see. This is room number three. Okay. Lovely. Okay, so I've got something here I will be looking at. 180 damage to Van Helsing. How much damage? 180. So you're down oh, to no. 120. Okay, so I've got a book here that is basically a ton of spells and incantations. Yeah. And I'll just be using it. Uh, okay, so no. I have uh, something here. The book takes only 100. I have something here that is anti-magic aura, and that's abjuration, hands, enchantment, and meta magic. Anti-magic works differently in K2 than other true. worlds. It's true. It's true. Uh, so there is. So you. So Osterberg kicks down this door, uh, feeling fully confident. And then a gigantic explosion uh, rocks the this building in the ground and throws us all backwards. Uh, Helsing, of course, taking a much worse brunt than uh, did Boston Brook. But they yeah. survive at a little bit less or more, give or take, than uh, half health. So. Okay. Yeah. But they do see like this, this building is made of stone, so the building is still fully intact. But it appears as if somebody just put like a series of like explosive traps on the doorways to keep people out. Oh, I just, I just found a spot I would have been able to use. Okay, so yeah, I found a spell that I would have been able to use, and. My unknowledge. There is a spell here called Destroy Barrier. <laughs> yep, that would have worked. Range 120 yards. Duration is permanent. Uh, 
Breaks of protection from evil or good spell. Well, that's not necessarily a barrier. Okay. It's like a, a, like a, uh, a condition break or like a spell's effect break. Oh. Uh, this could count as a. Like well, a I'm assuming that the barrier around us, is an effect. Yeah, it's an AOE effect. Yeah. But yeah, so this this room, the door explodes outwards. Uh, it's off its hinges now, and the inside looks to be more or less still intact, although it's you know scarcely furnished. And okay. There's a, uh, from what you can see, there is a staircase uh, across the room leading up. Okay. Now that we're inside, yes, yeah, so there's a there's a door to door to your right. There's a, a normal, like straight-ish staircase directly in front of you. There's a spiraling staircase, um, like behind you almost by by the door, and there's the the secondary entrance to your left. Okay, uh, I'm gonna check the door first. To the right. Two. One, one, there's the one to your left that leads back outside. That the the door itself is no longer on its hinges because it exploded, and the door to your right is still closed. All right, I'm gonna check the one on my right. All right, it is open, or well, it got locked anyway. Uh, so you walk through, and it's a it's a blacksmith like forge. All right. There's nobody here. The forge is still lit. Looks like it. Uh, was used relatively recently, but it hasn't been in like a a blow up. Okay. Uh, looks like it's still function. It's not like damaged or anything. Okay. I know what I can do. Okay. Uh, so well, it's just a normal forge. Yep, totally normal forge. Okay, uh, is there anything that I can... Anything you can, like, use in here? Like a yeah. weapon or something? Not a weapon, but as maybe, maybe extra protection, because I know that I am the only one that can do these incantations. Um, sure, make me a perception. I already know the first spell I'm going to be using. Uh, that is a... Nine. Okay. So you look around. There looks to be um, stuffed in a corner behind some boxes. There is like um, a, a plate, like a steel plate chest, chest piece. Like a cuirass, essentially, what the, the typical term is. Um, okay. Uh, I'll take it. Sure. That gives you 50 health. Ablative armor health. Um Yeah. Well, I know what I know what I'm doing for that spell. I'm just going to start testing some of these out. <laughs> well, keep in mind that you do have a a maximum number of spells you can cast per day. So. This is true. I've already attempted one. I want sigils. Mm -hmm. So I've used one. What's my max? Your max is 15. You got 14 left. I have 14 left? Yeah. For both incantation and sigil or just sigil? Yeah, for both. Oh, for both? Yeah. Okay, well this one's going to come in handy, so. Seeing as I, I I I would assume that I have a high casting ability, this should work out. And if we run into a lot of people, 
going to come very handy. Alrighty, so yeah, we're in this this blacksmith forge. Okay. Ain't nothing too special about it. All right, so I'm gonna go back out and uh, look at the door. There's a door on the left, right? Yeah, that led back out, back outside. Okay, so all right, well, time to go to the stairs. There are two stairs, one going up, one going down. <sighs> well, if I had to guess, I'd assume that big baddies downstairs. Is that where you want to go? Yeah. All right. You, you head downstairs through the, this like this stone spiral staircase. Uh, it gets significantly colder as you descend, and you come into a wine cellar with a door okay. uh, off to the right, and the, the whole left wall and straight in front of you are just like the big like casks of wine. One of which okay. is open, by the way. Is there any door around me? Yeah, there's one uh, directly to your right as you come out the staircase. All right. Well, it's like uh, I'm gonna try and detect magic. Uh, I know that's not a spell. I can just do that innately. Yeah. So you make a perception check for me then. All right. I. Some of these spells are very questionable. Uh, perception of eight. Okay, so you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be blunt with you for a second here. There is a spell in this spell book. <laughs> that is. <laughs> Prismatic dildo. <laughs> nice. And. Uh... It's not okay. Uh, so you look around with your, your third eye wide open, and through the walls, you can see that there are uh, several streams of uh, powerful magic, like reality, like cosmic magic, or cosmic energy, I guess. Uh, almost what looks like running along like a floor or something. Uh you can, like, it's been strong enough so you can see it through the walls. Okay. And it okay. Comes from, uh, can I see where it's coming from? Well, it it goes so there. So you're you're in this wine cellar. Um, part of the stream uh, runs off. Looks like it starts somewhere to your right in the distance. You can't see where it, like the origin point, and then it continues going uh, to your left, and then it kind of curves like like towards the um, towards the south and then it appears to curve a bit towards the, the east before you lose track of where it goes okay so it looks like we're going to the right door alrighty so you walk through a uh, poorly lit hallway round a corner and find yourself in a room full of smashed uh, boxes and crates. Interesting. Uh, there appear to have been um, like potions and uh, like food rations in here, but they've all been like smashed to pieces, hacked apart. Some of them are burned. Looks like whoever was here before wanted to eliminate any chance of uh, like scavenging supplies. Okay. Uh, I guess we continue on then. So there is uh, one open doorway right in front of you, and then another one to your left. Let's check the one on the left. Because if it is what I think it is, then we should be going... Action. Room number 25 is an empty room uh although there is Good. so there's a, a a hallway going south a door directly to your north and then um another empty hallway to the east 
Okay. To north, uh, the door behind me. So I can keep going straight. So you can keep going. You can keep going east to a hallway. Then there's another hallway south, and then there's a door, like a jail door, up above you. Hmm. So I'm just gonna. I think we're just gonna keep going the way we're going. Oh wait, I might need to. I might need to bust out my ability to see magic again. Uh, I yeah, think I'm gonna make do that. Yeah, sure. Safe, so we can please trip. Nine. From where you are standing, uh. The trail is most visible directly south of you. All right. Well, looks like we're going to the south. All right. So you walk down this short hallway um, and come into another kind of like lounge area. Okay. Um, there's nobody in here. It, it looks like so there are a lot of like scraping marks on the on the floor, as if people were okay. dragging stuff like supplies out. Um, there's a lot of like burnt out torches on the walls. Um, yeah, it looks like people left here in a hurry and didn't bother like cleaning up before they okay. left. And there is right. uh, uh, another uh, short hallway to the east. And that's it. Can I still see where the trail's going? Yes, you are like 15 feet away. From uh, a large collection of of magic to the wall, of course, south uh, south behind the wall. East. You said it's behind the wall. Yeah, it's this three-way wall. Yeah. <sighs> Is there a bookshelf? No, but there's a hallway. All right. Well, go into the hallway. All right. So as we stalk through. Uh, this seemingly abandoned base. Uh, we come to a, a big old heavy iron door. Uh, it appears to have been like rusted a little bit. Um, and you, you know, Boston probably like takes the ice limit and slices the door off its hinges and pushes it onto the ground. And you okay. find yourself standing in a circular uh, cavernous room with like rough like cave walls and floor and ceiling. Um, and through the middle of this room, running west to east, is a uh, river about three feet uh, in width of, like, the Black Icker. And then in the middle of this small room, this 15 by 15 foot room, the middle, middle, the middle like, five feet is another circular, like, collection of it, like a pond of it. Okay. And then across the room is uh, a single still burning torch. Uh, I'm gonna take out. I'm gonna put away my and uh, take out the book and my lighter mm -hmm. and uh, open up the flame and and like hold the book in my hand as I slowly move closer to the. Like Pardon? to the like. Uh, is there anyone in here with us? Uh, no. You do hear something coming, um, through the wall to your south, but there's no door there. Just that torch. Okay. Well, uh, I'm gonna. Are there any more torches in the room? Nope. One, huh? Yep. So I know I'm going to regret this later on. But uh, for a moment, I'm going to put away my lighter, uh, take out my rail lock, and shoot the icker. shoot it and see if 
see if I get a reaction. Um, you shoot it, um, and the the ground begins to shake. Um, for like a, a couple of things, for like a a five second earthquake, um, but there is no 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 like monster popping out to attack you or anything. Interesting. Alright, I'm going to reload, go into the center, and then shoot again. So you shoot at the, the Icar again? In the center. In the, yes. Okay, yeah. So you shoot the gun in the center. Or, well, in the center pond area, yeah. Yeah, yeah you shoot the like, center pond. Um, and the ground shakes violently. This time, a bit like stronger than, than the last, and like what what's almost like a, a fog horn seems to to sound off in the distance, and the uh, like bits of the ceiling start to like fall to the to the ground, and like as like this like unstable cave system begins like gyrating. Okay. But no monster pops out. You know, there's no, like... Here. I'm gonna... I'm gonna do... Thing. And look through this tome really scan through it I'm gonna cast really quick gonna unless cast, I need to roll gonna, for something gonna cast what I'm going to cast a spell that I don't know because I'm casting it on the icker but I am very much hoping that it does, because I find it comedic. And it is Greco and Flamidus, the Spartan barbecue. And it has the effect of fireball and the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, spell creates with an area of effect a sticky, incredibly hot material that adheres to whatever it this material erupts into fire and causes damage even when not flaming due to the incredible heat. It is only extinguished by the consumption of its fuel or application of enough cold to stop the reaction. Once warmed back up, it will reignite. I.e., you can't put it out, it must be out. Okay. So you're going to cast this on... The, you're just gonna create napalm on the basically <laughs> basically it's it's basically burning grease ah uh, okay so and, and I want to point out the name of this too this is a a one name I give a lot of credit to whoever came up with this name Greco inflamitus of the Spartan barbecue <laughs> okay uh yeah make make that endurance check i guess all right and whatever i roll in endurance only measures how much i put out it doesn't measure the amount of damage that this do because of burning hmm. okay so you uh like you know you hold out your hand you you know speak this latin phrase and you uh and like like just like napalm like flows out of your your hand as if you were a hose, yes, uh, a fire hose, but on tis, and uh, <laughs> it hits the icker and bursts into flame. Um, it reacts violently. Uh, it begins like spiking upwards, and a a very like shrill, like scream echoes throughout this cave system. Um, and the far wall, the one with the torch on it. Okay. Uh, like crumbles away entirely, and the torch falls to the ground, 
and lights more of the stuff on fire and <laughs> like the this this cave system is shaking violently a stalactite like detaches from the ceiling and slams into the, the floor and like the, the like uh and maybe maybe a perception check actually well i needed to draw it out i couldn't just have it there and stagnant i can't capture something stagnant into a non-perceivable dimension a uh, perception of eight so you uh hear like the sound of uh a, a wave in a raging storm okay and it's coming from the west west aka like farther up this river Okay. And it's getting uh, louder. I'm gonna tell Boston Brook to get back. I'm gonna make a thing. Cool. So Boston Brook, uh, he turns to you, and he, his his eyes kind of look like, like kind of like confused for a second. And then he seems to like. They, wait, they look like what? They look like like, like surprised, almost like confused. And then he he she shudders, uh, almost as if they like got, got like a chill down his spine. Um, and then okay. he, he he his ne his head like snaps over to uh the, like the west further up this this river of black goo. Um, he turns to you and he goes, "I believe it's time we needed to we need to leave, Doctor Helsing." And then he jumps over the middle pond of, uh, of Icker, and then like shoulder checks the crumbling wall across from you, and rushes like and like breaks this thin wall open, and then uh, that you now see was made of like, um, like foam, essentially like cardboard and foam. It's like trying to pretend to be part of the real wall, but it wasn't. Okay. Uh, he shoulder checks uh, I'm gonna... and runs, keeps like, running through down this in, in this like like darkness, this fog, on the side. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow suit, uh, and following I'm gonna try and uh, I'm gonna try and like uh, not do the same thing, but like make my way around to it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you 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 you're more careful. You walk around the other side. You don't try to leap over the top like Boston Buck did. Um, and the 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 walls, the ceiling, the floor are now shaking like tremendously. Like it's, it's difficult to walk and difficult to stand and stuff. I mean, you walk, make your way through uh. this hole in the wall, and you see, find yourself standing in. Uh, what appears to be an underground like dock okay uh, with a small wooden dinghy uh, floating gently like trolling gently uh, against this stone dock on the river of Icker and to the east um, there's there's like a, a, a bigger tunnel uh, where this river of Icker goes and like goes into the darkness and you can't converges see it yeah it just goes does it does it all converge into that one tunnel uh two well if you you're looking west you see that two uh of the smaller like thinner rivers connect into this single one yeah all right well i suggest that we follow the rivers and connect to the main chamber all right, so uh, you hop into the dinghy, I assume. Yes. So you hop into the dinghy. Uh, Boston Brook falls after you. He climbs in, and as soon as both of you are in, um, the boat just starts going on its own. Oh. And uh, as uh, you leave this, you know, underground dockyard, essentially, um, this small dockyard, albeit. Um, and you go down through this this tunnel, this cave tunnel. Behind you, um, uh, a there's this loud, thunderous, like collapsing sound of rock, as a big 
plume of like smoke like shoots out through uh, where you enter the, the dockyard. Uh, you know, of course, saying that the previous areas collapsed and fell in, um, and the river, the stream, suddenly like doubles in size and like intensity as the boat surges forwards and uh, moves at a quickening pace. Um, mm. Make me another perception check, or no, an intelligence check actually. Bachman is with me to make one as well. Four. Intelligence of nine. Uh, so, after probably, I don't know, a minute of sailing through this tunnel, uh, the shaking stops. The weird, creepy, like, shrill, almost scream from nowhere stops. Uh, the sound of the collapsing tunnel stops. Uh, the sound of the raging torrent of ichor behind you stops. And but but as you notice the sudden eerie quiet, uh, you look up and see that uh, there is open sky above you. And then you look back down towards the horizon and see that there is only open ocean in every direction. I'm getting a bad feeling about this. And you squint your eyes behind you and see what appears to be uh like the the go the coastline of like the bayou you can see swamplands off in the distance on, on the horizon very far away from you and uh much closer to you directly ahead of you is a relatively small island probably only a couple hundred yards in length um and it's probably 300 yards in front of you um, and uh, the sky is pitch black there are gigantic like pitch black clouds uh, absolutely covering the sky above you um, the waves are incredibly rough but the boat doesn't seem to be affected by them at all like the the water just kind of like like all around you there's there's like a storm brewing, um, but for a couple of feet around the boat, the water is totally calm, like a mirror. Well, if I had to guess where we have to go, say it's there. Uh, you don't have a choice, um, as you notice that the, that the boat, despite not having any motor or oars or anything, is still sailing towards the island. Ready yourself, boss. Uh, he draws life's limit and he pulls his, his 1911 out of his holster. And he's like, there's like sweat running down his face. And he's just like, he's, he's ready. He's, he's re roaring, ready to go. I'm going to draw Story Weaver and uh, open the book up to a uh, spell of ethereal containment. <laughs> What does that do? Well, it's it's not something on here. It's going to be taking quite a while to... Uh, it's going to be taking quite a while to cast. It's going to be a long cast. And it is going to be of sigil nature. Cantation. Okay. Uh... Make the endurance check for that, then. Uh, well, I'm not going to cast it yet, but once we get to this island, I know what I'm going to do. Ah, uh, okay. Horror arrives. Okay. Um, so as you get uh, closer to this island, uh, you see all of the leaves on the trees fall off of the tree, like, every tree, almost simultaneously, and they just, like, fall okay. to the ground. And then like rot, and turn like brown to black, and then like sink into the into the ground, all in a matter of like ten seconds. And okay. Probably like a hundred fifty yards away from this place, but now you're, you're relatively close. Um, 
see if I can't find a spell aid. As you drift ever closer to this island, um, the tremors start up again. The waves are now, like, probably three or four feet high. Okay, I've got a spell that I'm going to use on Boston. Sure. I'm going to be using the spell Deity Bind. Uh, and this is spell links life of the caster with the power of a chosen god. Once the link has been created, nothing can break it short of the duration elapsing. What level is that? A level 10 spell. Yeah, you can't. That's physically impossible for a human to cast. Huh? That's physically impossible for any normal, any mortal to cast. I'm not a mortal. I'm saying any non-deity to cast. Level 9 is the maximum. For master spellcasters, by the way. Level 9 is the maximum. Okay. So I need to look at... Okay, there we go. So the, these, these waves, they are probably, you know, four feet high. Uh, the tremors get worse and worse. The sky is somehow getting darker despite it being practically like pitch black. Um, it begins to, to pour rain. Thunder rings out in the distance. A crack of lightning hits the ocean. And you see, like, the, the, the ocean, like, boils away a little bit when lightning hit it. Um, so, I've got a couple of spells that I could use here. I mean, yeah, sure, give me, give me what they are. Well, I have a spell called Trura, and this would be an evocation around... Uh, spell creates a bright aura three inches thick that covers the caster's entire body or has these effects immunity to light and energy based attacks total protection from physical attacks by creatures of the quasi elemental planes of radiance light and mineral mm -hmm. ability to breathe and move at full movement rate within the quasi elemental plane of radiance ability to cast alter protection once the aura does not restrict the caster in any ways. For like normally, while under the influence. Okay, so that I mean, you could cast that, but seeing as you aren't in the elemental plane of radiance, it would like be as useful. I need spell. It's gonna like protect. And Brooke and make him even formidable. I mean, I don't know if that would like really do too much, just because of the the fact that like we aren't fighting like radiance based enemies. This is true. This is true. I'm just trying to find thing that's going to heck him. Offer a prayer of protection to the martyrs, I guess. Sure. What would that be? I'm going to make a perception check for the great martyrs. <laughs> Let's see. Do we need to do three? Um, yeah, sure. Do three. I'll get another one. Uh, D10. They'll get a one, and they'll heal you. Hear you, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, let's see. What would the... Hmm. So, basically, this prayer is going to be my signal to them to open up this yeah, dimension. they're like... Okay, yeah, 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 okay. So, you, uh, you know, throw your hands up into the air. You uh, pray to the sun. You praise the sun for a second. And a... Uh, like the the super super heavy pitch black clouds that have been moving in more and more as time has gone on um they part and through the clouds you stick into like the like space essentially you see 
like a, a a portal open up that is like a circle of just white like blinding white light you don't really know but it's just like like a, a dot of white appears in the sky and then gradually gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger well there's our there's our race in the yeah. Uh, so as this this portal opens up, um, the the waves are turning. The um, island. You look at the island that you're heading towards, um, and suddenly uh, this huge tsunami uh, appears over to like the the west towards the ocean, and it collides with the island, and it covers the whole island and it takes out every tree and every piece of grass and you see that this tsunami is not water but it is the black goo and it crashes over this island and it takes out all the trees and it you know shows them in the ocean um and the island itself uh suddenly splits apart as uh this acre like absorbs into the ground and then tremors get worse and worse the ground opens up the island splits and uh you know it rains down from the skies the, the rain is pouring black uh like like purplish lightning you know crashes into the ocean all around this place um the waves are now like seven foot high probably like the, the now the dinghy is even affected and it's rocking back and forth boston brook is vomiting over the side uh because he's not used to this much you know, seasickness. I was immune to it. So. Boston Brook, if you believe in any deity, namely the martyrs, now is the time to pray. Uh, Boston Brook uh, looks into the sky. He, you know, holds life's limit up, and he goes, "I'm an anti-theist." And then he puts the sword back down. <laughs> uh, Brook, you. F yeah, so well, he's, he's he's a nay theist, theist, which is to say that like he knows that gods are real, but but refuses to worship them essentially, which is you know basically like his whole thing. Um, so the island is is splitting apart, and this giant like sphere of uh, like pitch black darkness that uh, gives Helsing like a PTSD flashback of his dream and when he went into that other portal like, I'm gonna I'm gonna shake myself out of it. Yeah, give me uh give me an intelligence Dur check. Other yeah intelligence work. Eight. Cool. So yeah so as so it, I get a I get a slate flashback yeah. but I, I snap myself out of it. Yeah, and tell myself to... that I will not be swayed by the persuasion of this being no longer. Yeah, so you you kind of get like like flashes and images in your head of the this gigantic galaxy-sized monstrosity in this unknown realm of space, and you kind of like shake your mind free, you like smack yourself across the face a couple times, and you know you you clear your head. Um. So, a terrible scene. The island is entirely consumed and is shoved into the ocean by this giant black sphere of energy. Um, the spherical portal then uh, like hovers higher and higher into the air, uh, ascending towards the, the blackened sky as the, okay. uh, these pitch black clouds open up and like allow this portal to like c continue ascending. So there's now two portals, right? There's a gigantic bright white one. Um, off in the distance, and then there is this pitch black one that is slowly lifting itself by a sheer force of will, presumably, uh, farther and farther so, into the sky. So, one of them's coming down, the other one's going up. Yep, pretty much. Now's our chance, boss, Brook. We need to contain it. Uh, uh, so, the, the, the boat uh, reaches this shore, quote-unquote shore, of this island, 
um, but the island is split into like a dozen or so like smaller chunks of land um, with one sp like I interesting if you will uh, chunk still left around and that is there is a single uh, platform of stone masonry surrounded by a large stone hedge like structure uh, covered in glowing runes sitting atop like a thin pillar of uh, like dirt and rock that was untouched by the creation of this portal and you can hear a man yelling at the top of his lungs chanting over the sound of this rushing black ichor that has replaced the ocean by the way Oh gosh. And you now find yourself standing here. <sighs> okay. Alright. So there is uh, thunder and lightning. The rain is like sideways at this point. Um, and Mr. Brewer is facing this glowing ring. Uh, in here is like um, like ichor covered like dirt and like rock. Um, and there's this ring of glowing red runes and like a, the like drippings of the ichor that fall from the portal down from the sky above it. And he is chanting away, having a good old time yelling at the sky. Boston Brook, can you take the shot? Sure. Boston Brook's gonna... I lost that dice. Boston's gonna try to murder the lawyer man. That's a pass. Uh, let me get my notebook up. Brook. Yep, that's a pass. Wait, is it a pass? Yes. It's a bear pass, but it's a pass. Um, fire pistol. 2v100 damage. I've lost those dice too. Great. Fog of War. Where did those go? <laughs> when, did the, when did the Fog of War? We need like a bunch of dice in that Fog of War bit because there's a big old thing hidden behind there, so. <gasps> Nice, 190 damage. So, Boston Brook, he quick turns on his heels. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, he shoots Brewer, square in the chest, uh, with the, his 1911 blessed gun. And the uh, the chanting stops as Brewer looks towards Helsing and Boston Brook with like a wild, crazy look in his eyes. And his face is all like twisted and contorted and there's black ichor like leaking from between his mouth and like his teeth and stuff and like his eyes and he's like he's like a, a walking eldritch horror basically and he's been shot in the chest and he stumbles backwards clutching his wound um and he uh screams at us as he like you know collapses to his knees and he's like you're too late investigators you can't change the flow of time the winds of change are in my favor and nothing can be done to save this world and then he just like so I'm going leaps over the edge of the uh, like platform and you hear him like bloop into the ichor filled uh, ocean and he's gone ah he left with this ceremonial ritualistic uh, circle I'm going to start carving uh, sigils of the martyr into the ground uh, I'm going to carve three different sigils uh, the sigil of mother nature sigil of father fate and the sigil of Creo alright so you begin carving those uh, I need you to roll me I'm gonna, initiative. I'm going to carve them in a triangle. Cool. So in a triangular pattern. What does Boston Brook get? Seven. Seven plus a five you have, right? Yes. Yes. Eleven. That's pretty good. Boston Brook got an eight. He was not on the ball today. And then, what does the enemy get? Great question. That's an 8 plus 7. You get a 15. Okay. 
so as you begin carving these runes into the, uh, like, like you're, you're basically, like, covering, like, just, like, uh, carving over the runes that are already there. Uh, yes. And, it be, like, the, the glowing begins, like, like, wavering and shaking and blinking on and off as you damage the circle of, uh, sigils. Um, but suddenly, the ground, uh, shakes even more violently, which it makes now makes it difficult to stand. Um, as a truly horrifying visage appears on every side of us. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so I'm going to make an endurance check. Uh, yes. So you, my friend. Oh, yes! I am unwavered. My belief in the martyrs, my bosses. And my guardians is unwavered as I carve these sigils over the over the existing as as an attempt as an attempt to channel them in to these uh to the area around me and uh, give us some kind of a fighting chance. Yeah, so you you may you keep your your head on straight, Fox. But you keep his head on straight, despite witnessing what is essentially like a this bit like this this thing is probably like five six stories tall, and these tentacles that grow come out of the ocean as well are also like massive. So presumably, they think like are connected to his body somehow. You just can't see from the waist up. Ah. Uh, so uh. he is a big boy. Um, okay. And uh, it is his turn. What is he going to do? Let's see. Boss fight number one. It's exciting. Stage one boss fight. He's going to do this. He needs to make a check. Wow. Did you just do it again? Yes, yes, I did. Reroll time, okay. Nice, okay. So, uh... Okay. So, this thing, like, rises out of the ocean, and you, like, at first, it sounds like Brewer's, like, posh voice, and then it contorts into, like, a super deep, guttural scream of both agony and like, you know, anger and rage, uh, as he rises out of the ocean, and he holds his massive, clawed, tentacled, weird hands into the air, and another giant wave of black goo, uh, zips past him, and it, like, bends around him, and then it crashes onto the island. You need to make... Boston Brook... You both need to make Boston Bro checks. Close every orifice you can. Four. Endurance is seven. Nice. He got a seven. So. Yep. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we. Let me get the dice I need. You both take 30 damage. Alright. Damage. Twenty and you're down to Oh wait, damage. I would have regenerated. Oh uh, yeah. You probably would have regenerated to full, actually, so you're down to yeah. two two seventy. Well I also have that armor. Oh yeah. So yeah. Great one. Alrighty. So uh, this gigantic tidal wave, you know, crashes down. We, like, you know, I think uh, you probably, like, stab your, like, our swords into the stone and kind of, like, hold on as this, like, tsunami brushes over us. Uh, but it does pass, and the, the battlefield is now covered in, like, an inch of goo. Uh, minus the, the circle in the middle. The, the circle in the middle is still, um, like, totally unharmed. But the rest of it is uh, it Are is the there. runes that I carve... They're still there. Uh, are the runes that I carve still there? They're like, they're glowing? Yeah, yeah, they're still there. They're, they're, they're fine. 
Okay. Uh, I'm gonna begin my uh, casting of the containment spell. So I need you to give me an intelligence and an endurance. Four and a two. I want the two to be my intelligence. Okay. You do pass both. Alrighty. Oh, my coin. Okay. So oh, you found the coin? Yeah, the coin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you uh, begin, you know, chanting, carving these very intricate symbols into the ground. Uh, you know, your your belief in the great martyrs channeling through you. Uh, the the big white portal in the sky shines a beacon of light down on us. Um, and yeah, that's that's your turn. Now we're up to Senor Boston Brook. Boston Brook, what is he going to do? Ah! Honestly, I want to take some of those holy bullets there and uh, try and incapacitate some of those tentacles. <laughs> gonna do a charging no he's gonna do yeah he's gonna he's gonna run over one two three four what's his agility when he has a sword I think it's seven yes five six seven yeah, he's gonna shoot at this tentacle over here why him. not the closer <laughs> ones? Well, this one's like this is true. That one is close there. This one's close to one. So he gets he's gonna shoot twice. He has to get a six or higher. He hits one. So it's two d one hundred damage. So the shake of the island kind of like f him, I guess. Yeah, uh, one hundred and twenty damage. Alrighty. Nice. Nice. This one is down to 280 health. Okay. Yeah. I'm also speaking in like a very ancient language, right? Yeah. Well, you were speaking in the language of like the Shadow Ones, which is the beings that the Great Martyrs were originally. Um, okay. Like their sacred tongue or whatever, and is totally incomprehensible. To anyone from not from there, so odds are Boston Brook can't actually hear what you're saying. Ah, okay, so that's that's actually there, really cool. Just, like, can't hear I like that. Yeah, I like that. Very true, 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 uh, true, 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 so true. while while I'm uh, making this incantation, uh, I'm staring Mr. Wesley Brewer directly in the eyes, so he can see the uh, rage and. Uh, and drive that the that he has brought upon himself and that he knows that he has incurred the wrath of the great martyr themselves. Alrighty. Yeah, so you, you stare at this monster dead in the eyes. Uh and it's back to his turn. Uh his tentacle boys. Technically, they can all take separate turns or like different actions because like they're quote unquote different entities. Um, but I think these two tentacles are gonna shoot at Boston Brook, and then these two. No, that's the wrong thing. <laughs> these two guys. These are two. You. Yeah. So we're gonna do the ones hitting Boston Brook first. Ladies first. Six and a, that one went away. That one went weird. Quick roll. Three. And this this was a six. And a three. Okay. Perception of this okay. monster is a six. So this one actually misses. Boston Rook. This one does hit. And they, they, they do a lot of damage, though. Hiya. Well, actually, this can be dodged. This can be. Yeah. It, it is a big enough entity. 
first start slow for the projectiles. So he can dodge this. So let's see. He does. Almost <laughs> that, was, that was almost bad. He almost died. Yeah, he he almost died. But actually, no, he wouldn't have. I rolled three tens. Are you serious? Yeah, look, I rolled three hundred and eighty. <laughs> wow. Okay. Talk about good bad luck. All right. Those two were. No, wait. He would have died. Yeah, he would have, cause he's at one twenty right now. Oh yeah. Oof. That would have been a perfect hit. Well, actually, Osprey would regenerate a little bit, so I'll give him his due diligence. Thirty more. Uh, would I also? Uh, well, no, cause it's, it's armor damage for you, so you don't, you don't regen that. Oh yeah. yeah. That's armor damage. I forgot about. That. Yeah. Up to one fifty. Only 100 more to go, and he's back to full health. <laughs> um, okay, so these two next are going to try to shoot at you. Well, this one's kind of too far to get me. Uh, Did both of them miss? The... Did they both miss? Huh? Did they both miss? Three and a four. Uh, one bear hits you. But you can still dodge this, in theory. I'm gonna... I'm just gonna take, like, a quick side step. Yeah, that's all we really take, so get advantage, why not? Five versus Five. only one. Well, Five. Yeah, so you do pass. Yes! So the, the closer one, like, like, almost hits you, and you kind of just, like, like, duck, like, lunge to the side, and then it splatters on the the ground and these things are um, are launching balls of ichor at you so yeah that's why they do so much damage ah okay and now we are uh back to you so you can make your two checks again all right all right eight and a two two is going to be my intelligence it's gonna be my endurance. Alrighty. So, uh, you continue this, this weird chanting in the language that nobody else but you can actually hear. Um, and the monster that was Wesley Brewer uh, is now, like, visibly, like, in pain. Like, parts of his body are, like, decaying, and, like, his, like, tendrils are, some of them are, like, falling off and, like, dying in the water. Uh, not these ones, though. The, the tiny ones. Um, Alright. Now bring us to Boston Brook. Who's going... Hmm. Um, he could do his job and protect the caster. Well, he's trying, but, you know, only two actions versus four. Um, this is true. He's not going to move. And uh, he's going to... Uh, shoot this guy twice as one action, and then the other, other tentacle twice as another action. Alright. <clears throat> this is stage one of four, by the way. Yes, let's see. If we're going on, if we're going on stages of sides, this is stage one of four that I have to do. Yep. 80 damage. He's down to only 200. He's at half health. What, these had 400 health? Yeah. The big boys. Shoot twice again. Ooh, critical. And then a 5, so let's do the first one. Actually, he 10 and a 5. So he has to do 200 more to that guy. 120, so this one's down to 80, actually. And then the damage for the normal hit on the second tentacle is 90. He's down to 310. 310. Uh, and then the critical hit ooh, gets doubled. Ooh. Oh! Oh! But oh! bam, the second shot, like, rips a gigantic. Like, maybe, like, it. It enters one of like the suckers, and like 
yeah. it goes into it and it like explodes and like the tentacle like blasts apart. Really yeah. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. And now we are back to the monster. Bravo, Mr. Boston Brook. <laughs> so I need to get a few more counters to tell. So I can already tell that when I'm over here, I'm going to have a little bit more protection. Yeah. Mainly because Doesn't the only thing that can really... The only thing that could really pose as a threat at that point would be him. Mm -hmm. You really can't do much. Okay, um, he's going to, he's going to attack at Boston Brook with this one tentacle over here, because okay. Boston Brook uh, killed another tentacle. So this is, range of three squares, yep, he can hit him. Um, Boston Brook can dodge this. Let's roll an agility check to dodge this. And then Boston Brook can also counter this. Ah! Oh, another 10 from Boston Brook. Jesus. Okay. Oh! Uh, so he does full counter, um, which means he uses, he uses life's limit uh, to counter attack through his fists. So, yeah, he's just going to make a life's limit attack against this, this poor tentacle. That, thought it could that has already been sh shot like four, four times. Yeah, that was foolish enough to think it could hit <coughs> the monster truck and live. Um, oh, it really wasn't the tentacle. It was it was it was Wesley Brewer that thought he could hit him with the tentacle. Yeah. What did I get? Uh, yes. Shower me with dice. Oh my gosh. So, tentacle. So this is tentacle. Like tries to like 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 slam down on Boston Brook. And he just holds his limit above his head, and Tentacle falls on the sword, and he just kind of like like swipes, like brings the sword back down forwards, and cuts the Tentacle in half. Nice. Just straight up. Yeah. And now we're up to you again. I was gonna say, I was gonna say it like goes to slam down, but as it goes, very like anime style, he like swipes out, and then there's like a second before. Like, the tentacle stops, and then it just slides into two and falls around him. Mm. Yeah. Very epic. So it's back up to me, right? Yep. Alright. Finish out my incantation. I don't know how many turns this is going to take. Uh, keep going with my incantation. Then. And sigil carving. That is a five and a six. Let's go. Okay. Now we're back down to Mr. Boston. So now, so now I I I go into the more in intricate uh, carvings, and uh, of the sigils, and uh, my chanting gets more intense. As as the as the light aura around me uh, begins to intensify. Yeah. So let me just have my cool down real quick. Okay. So back up to the to Boston Brook. Okay. One. No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's gonna shoot at this tentacle. Gonna shoot at him twice. He misses both times. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Enemy's turn. Uh I can do my cooldowns again. Okay. What's he gonna do? Oh, I know what he's gonna do. Okay. So suddenly Wesley Brewer, of the Tor, uh, like places his like his arms on top of this island because he is now waist high with the island, um, and then he like opens his gaping maw, and then like like slams his own face 
down over Boston Brook and tries to eat him. Oh, Boston Brook, please get a counter on this one. So, Boston Brook has to make an endurance check at disadvantage. Let me roll the second one. So, you got an 8 on one and a 9 on the other. Okay, so he does pass. Oh! Uh, so, Boston Brook, this is, is it, a, it is a new round. So, yeah, he can full counter. Time to full counter. Yes! Austin Brook. A oh, 320 damage. Who oh boy. So this this monstrosity uh, like brings his long neck and just kind of like places his mouth around Boston Brook essentially, and then uh, Boston Brook like like you like you see, so you're just like you're just, like chanting and you get worried for a second because like nothing's happening and then you see like Boston Brook just like cuts his like upper lip open and then like walks through the hole. And like the monster reels back and oh, screams and like lightning. Oh, ah yes. So the portal above us is it getting like larger? Uh, the black one is like still going upwards. Yes, the right one is getting bigger. Yeah. Good. Uh. uh all right. Turn. No, wait, it's my turn. Yeah. Make your. Yeah. Make your other two checks. These dice are on fire. They are I'm rolling well. Nice. Four and a six. Very nice. So the uh, side so... uh, suddenly turns a nice shade of purple instead of red. Ah. So does that mean it's dispelled? Yep, you've you've nullified one quarter of this this thing. This monster's health. Yep. Uh, so now is there a cooldown on my incantations, or no, you can is do this it. okay? So I'm going to come over to this side. And, uh, I'm gonna come, like, right here and start, uh, the next ritual. Alright, so you can, uh, resume that next <clears throat> turn. Now our company yep. Boston broke once again. He's going to take two more shots with his pistol. Who is tanking? I want to say he's tanking. Yeah, he's really. He's... Oh, he's got a natural one. You did get a six, though. So that one does do damage. Ooh, 160 damage too. Nice. Dang. Very nice. He's down to 200. <clears throat> nice. So the natural one, he's his gun jams. Uh, so he has to spend a turn, you know, or an action. So he, so he can't move. But he's no, he's out of ammo. Sure, yeah. That was the last he's, bullet. That was the last bullet. Yeah, so the last, last, last bullet. Uh. So he's, his pistol's out of action now. Um, so his second action is going to be uh, moving away from the giant monster. One, two, three, All right. four, five, six, seven. Why not? He'll be right dead between the two of them. Really just, you know, challenge them both. And now we come back to the enemies. These two are going to try to shoot at Bossbrook. Let's hope he can dodge. Yeah, let's hope. He's sacrificing himself. He got a four. What's his thing? Perception. Those are both bear hits. Uh, but he can still dodge. He can dodge one of them, technically. So, let's dodge one. That's a bear pass. Our second one. Let's go. Ooh. Woo! Oh, that was close. Okay. <laughs> he almost he almost took a lot of like damage. Right he there. almost bit the dust. Uh, oh, he does have to get to heal again though. Yes. Because of his turn. Another thirty. Health. Thirty. He's at the two hundred forty. He's ten away from being max. So he would have survived nice. that, actually uh, if he got hit. Oh, he would have. Yeah. Oh, very because nice. They both did like bare minimum damage because or like a uh, half damage because they they bare hit. 
But they still hit, they still miss, so that goes on cooldown again. Haha. -ha. So are we entering stage two now? Yes, so roll your two dice. Alright. What? What? No, wait, no, 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 no. I was in the middle of and then the menu cut out. Alright, that's better than what it was before. Yeah. Uh, two's gonna be my intelligence, the seven's gonna be my endurance. Alright, sweet. So, that does exceed. And we come back yes. to Boston Brook. Um, he's gonna do something really stupid. Oh no. No. He leaps onto this tentacle and then is going to stab it. It can't dodge him because it's a tentacle. Um, so he, it just does a ton of damage right off the bat. 250 damage. How much? 250. Squ square equal. He's down to 150 health. Nice. So he's now riding this tentacle like a cowboy and stabbing it, which is fun. I feel like he's letting out a lot of pent-up aggression. Yeah, probably. Uh, he can heal again, actually. This is his turn. He didn't even reload! No, he, didn't, he doesn't have to reload. He's a sword. And 50 more health for him, so he gets maximum. Okay. Yes. Righty. So, down to JVH again. No, down to enemies again. What is yes. he going to do? He's going to... Um, ah, ooh, this is going to be can't... This tentacle is going to try to attack Bob. Can he dodge? Um, well, he can make a... Well, hmm, okay, this tentacle has to make a perception check to avoid hitting his friendly tentacle. How about that? Okay, there we go. Wow. Oh! Wow, okay. 4d100 damage to his friend. That is also doubled because he missed so bad. Okay. Oh my god. That's 320 <laughs> damage. 260? That's well, well, oh, so he does, wait, so he does it's doubled. Yes, he does 520. He does... Yeah. Wow. Okay. So Boss Rook now needs to make an agility check to avoid falling into the ocean. Yes. Wow. Oh yeah. So so this okay so this this tentacle over here right he lashes out and he he like sm tries to smack it. No 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 no. So so I know what happens. It like coils up to like try and stab at Boston Brook, and then when it shoots out. Boston Brook leaps off at the last okay, second onto, this one. onto okay. the other one yeah. as it stabs through the yeah. other one. Yes. Exactly. So now we come to JVH <laughs> after witnessing that absolute like badassery. All right. Uh, so JVH is gonna have a like a millisecond of pride, which is overwashed by uh Terror as his, <laughs> which is overwashed by the necessity to kill this eldritch beast. Yeah. Four and an eight. Let's go. Four and JVH. Eight. Okay. JVH means business today. So his eyes start to uh, start to glow like this, the same white and purple that is on the uh, runes as he, as he keeps carving and uh, casting this in, in incantation, uh, as he as he starts to channel the pure spirit of the martyrs themselves. Uh, lovely. So, Boston Brook, he's gonna stab this tentacle. <sighs> oh my gosh! <laughs> that can't dodge him. So, Fubo it also can't strike itself. Yeah. Yeah. 
They got caught on the Eldritch, Eldritch Beast. 250 damage. That might kill it. Oh my lord. Oh, it does kill it by 10 health. So bam. Oh man. Agility check to hop back on to the platform. That's cockeyed. Did you just roll a one? Yes. Ah! So uh, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe the martyrs will have mercy on you today. Well, you're close enough to the shore. Yeah, I'll give advantage for that, actually. Let's roll twice. If it, if it was a second one, I'm going to freak out. I swear to God. Okay, good. He does make you're it only out. about a foot out. So he, does, he, does, he barely makes it on to this place, but he does make it on. So all that's left now is the Eldritch Horror and us. Yeah, so up to the Eldritch Horror. Eldritch Horror, he, uh, he looking, he looking worse for wear now. He's like, he's like, his like fishy scales are like turning gray. Um, he looks very angry. His lip has rehealed, of course, that regenerated. Um, so he opens his mouth and, uh, actually no. No, 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 He uses his tidal wave ability again. So both of us need to make endurance checks again. It's a pass from Austin Brook and a pass from you. It's a pa that's a perfect pass. All right. So we both pass. Uh, but some, some, some guys are going to pop up. Hope I roll low. This is what I meant by okay. stage two. Slorp and slorp. So, so, so the, the pool of ichor that is left from this tidal wave that washes back over the island again. Uh, two, like, writhing, like, like bits of it, like, slorp themselves into forms. And this guy's actually gonna go after Boston Brook because yeah. why not? They are so gonna go I also, turn. I also have a thing that happens after I finish this square. Uh, after I had finished the this side, uh, like behind it, there's almost like a dispel of the ichor behind me, and like the ground turns back to normal, and like the water behind me like ripples away uh, as okay. as the black ichor is dispelled behind me. So I'm gonna. guys can't walk on the purified tiles and then it would it would expand this one as well yeah. uh, 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 uh. so it's in like a uh, diagonal And it also, oh my gosh, also goes down. Alrighty. So yes, these guys can't like spawn here. They can't touch here. All that stuff. Nice. Um. So yeah, make your two checks for your turn. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, let's go. All right. this other side. It's very nice. So is there like a live counter that uh yeah. takes what numbers I get, adds them together, and then subtracts it from the sides? No, I just have like so long as you you, you succeed, like like you have to succeed 
for X amount of turns in order to, to finish it. So, uh, okay. Frost of Rook is going to sword slash this guy. He can't dodge this because he's a stupid ball of goo. 260 damage. He is now down to 250, uh, 250. Now we're back up to the enemies. This guy, Blurgy Blurgy Blurgy. This guy, Blurgy Blurgy Blurgy. Big boy. What is big boy gonna do? Big boy. Big boy, I don't think what's gonna do. Big boy is going to make a thing. He's gonna roll a D8 because I wanna make this harder. That's an unfortunate number that I'm not going to keep because I'm going to roll again. Wait, what? That's a marginally better number. I will keep it. Uh, Can he re-roll? Is, is he a halfling? Yeah, yeah he's a halfling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure. I hate you. He's whatever race I decide he is. Uh, I can get some things really quick. Oh no. This color. Oh no. Oh no. I'm gonna be big. Uh. Probably not quite as big um, as one, but it's still pretty big. Alrighty, and that's what he is his turn to spend doing. <laughs> Boop. Uh. uh discourse number one. Uh, what is he gonna do? 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 He's gonna. He's gonna slap him. No. Which you can do four times. Boss can dodge four times. He only failed one of them. Oh. Two. Well, he did one this number. Doubled damage. 140 damage. Big yikes. Okay. He's down to 110 health. Yeah, he'll throw it back. Yeah. Uh, second discourse is going to... Oh, I know what he's going to do. He's going to uh, back away from you. One, two, three, four. Back towards his big papa. And then... Uh, he's going to make a check. That's not right. Make this easier this way. Perfect. You are now over here. I hate you. Yep. So you just like so you're you're mid chant, and then uh, you're suddenly ten feet away from where you used to be. I hate you. Uh. So it's back to my turn, right? Yes. Um, I'm not stopping the the incantation. I'm going to walk over to show how little that did to me as I still continue my incantation. Uh, and I'm going to get back to doing my... Five and a nine. So my endurance... My, my rolls are consistently getting higher. They are. <clears throat> Lucky, lucky you, this side is finished. Yes. Which is why I made that big old bump in difficulty before. <laughs> Can you just highlight all the time to make I mean, I could if they weren't locked in place. Let me unlock them for a minute. Mm. 
That means that this side is completely pure. So if we do need a moment of respite, what? him out. Oh, I did. Lovely. Lucky. Okay. Uh, these ones too, you said? So this entire is now pure okay yeah so that's all like sacred holy ground yes i know what i'm gonna save this yeah that one for last <laughs> here i know what i'm doing over here okay so so i'm gonna be coming over to here actually can you get there in one turn so you're Okay, so you ended your turn here, so you're still there. But I can't be attacked. Yeah, you can't be you can't be touched. You may be I cannot. Um, up to the enemies. <laughs> Discourse number one. Is, oh no, it's Vosbrook actually. Vosbrook's gonna try to attack Big Blob. Dang, he got two hundred and sixty damage. No, actually. Ooh. Oh, he kills it anyway. Okay. Never mind. Wait. Okay. okay. So, uh, that wasn't Bosser Book's attack. That was the um, continuous damage from the first attack. Oh. So, Bosser Book can now turn his attention to whomever he wants to turn his attention to. Uh, I'd say the second discourse. Or the second. Okay. He's, we can't make it there. So, one. Two, three, actually, we've got this two, five, six, seven. And then he's going to spend just barely reloading his gun. So next turn, he can shoot if this guy wants to. He gets to heal. 20, 20 health. Okay, now we're up to the enemies again. Big boss man. Uh, actually, no, this discourse. Let's see how far he can get. He has an agility of uh, four. He's going to attack Boss and Book again. And he's going to use. Oh, wait. <gasps> I know what he's going to do. Never mind. He looks at Boss and Brook, and that Boss and Brook is in the ocean. Ah. Uh. That's not on a cooldown. Actually, is it? Let's, let, me, let me see. Oh, it is. Dang it. Ah! <laughs> you reminded me about that. Uh, I'm going yeah. to end this turn. So next turn, he'll be able to use it. Um, so he's going to look at Boston Book, and he's going to walk over. He's going to slither over, over. And then he's going to... Uh, he's going he's gonna to pierce him. Boston Book can dodge this. I was going to say, can Boston Brook parry? Wow. But never mind. But Boston Brook can parry, actually. <clears throat> I was going to say, he's got a sword. I know I can parry. Yeah, he can parry. Um, <clears throat> tools for parrying. Parry is going to... Uh, Despite the incoming attack, can I dodge a block on top of this? Use the well, it's a straightforward bar. attack. Don't need to check to determine any success. Okay. Ah, okay. Now he's gonna try to parry this. Nice. Hey, there we go. So now okay. he can knock him off. Parrying was. Or he can counter. He's got a full counter, because why wouldn't he? Nice. Oh, Jesus. Let's. Yeah. That. Wow. 
Okay, you got 90 damage. Is it dead? Man. Nope. Did he only get 90? Yeah, I know. I rolled like three ones there. Very bad. <laughs> I keep doing that. Very, very upsetting. Uh, um, yeah, so that's this guy's turn. Uh, big boy, he's going to spawn some more tentacle friends. But they can't come in the water over here. Nope. Because, well, this one's technically taking damage then. I'm going to have him take... How much do we want to range for holy damage? 5d100 doubled is what I'm feeling. Oh my god. Well, because, like, this isn't, like, this isn't, like, a, a K2 god. This is a omniversal god. This uh, is a god that we have... He's under 60 health. Oh! And the next turn that he stays in this, uh purified area but luckily our, our friend he does spawn another tentacle so he spawns it over here smart smart for a, for a babbling beast like yourself yeah and this tentacle uh, being aware of the fact that he's being brutally murdered um, he's gonna disappear by, the by the purification of of literal omniversal gods. Yeah, so he reappears over there. Well, this one's about to get it next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Assuming he lives that long. Um, now we're down to you again. Alright. Let's see. How many movement spaces do I have? Uh, seven. So I can just barely make it in. Yeah, I'll count that, sure. So I begin. Just make your two checks. Well, nice. so two for the intelligence and a five. Thanks. Alrighty. So that one's good. Got back to Boston Brook. Boston Brook. Uh, so this guy takes first the 500 damage from the poison effect. And now I begin. I like I myself begin oh, to my like, Lord. blow a bit brighter. What happened? 370 damage. How much? 370. Uh, I need to do some calculator math over here. Four ten minus three seventy. Forty. Okay, so he's down to forty health. So this is this is off of the the effect that late lim life's limit had. Yes. He hasn't even made his attack yet. Nope. And I think Boston Brook. He's going to. One, two, three, four, and then shoot his gun. Just one holy bullet square in the ass. Dead a hit. I don't think I don't even miss actually. So perception. That is a miss. Yes. So this guy's still alive for now, but he's guaranteed to die next turn, so... <laughs> Basically. And he heals again as well. Nice, 60 more health. Up to 190. Hey, hey! Now we're up to the enemies. Um, discourse number one. <coughs> One, two, three, four. He can't pierce. He can't displace again, actually. So he's going to displace Boston Brook into the arms of this tentacle. 
I can't break the incantation. That's his turn. This tentacle is going to make a strength check to crush Boston Buck. <laughs> but he's going to do it at disadvantage. Well, he's still oh, but that was a lot better than But it been. wasn't a crit. Um, so they do this much damage. Ah, yeah. Ooh, 90. Okay. Boston Brook is down to 100 health. About where I started a couple turns ago. So honestly, not that big a deal. Boston Brook screams out in agony as this uh, thinner tentacle... Um, that lack suckers begins to squeeze him like a constrictor snake. Yes. Uh, <sighs> that brings us to you again, so make your check. Yes. Yes. No. Five and a four, okay. Nice. So hearing Boston Brick scream throws me off for a second. But I, I regain my footing. I I I know what I have to say. It's the same thing I've done for the other two. It's natural to me now. My my whole being, like my jacket turns white. Uh the like the glasses that I'm wearing turn white. My hair is like blonde now. I, I am starting to become the full embodiment of the martyrs themselves. They're starting to become. I'm not there yet. Lovely. <clears throat> yes. So JVH is going a temporary uh, deitic change. Yeah. He is slowly being morphed into his, like, new form, his next form. Basically. Uh, that brings us to Boston Brook. Boston Brook, uh, action number one. Actually, no, action number one is kill discourse. Automatically happens. Um, action number one, stab tentacle. That can't dodge him. So... Three hundred and thirty damage. Oof. He kills this one actually by a long shot because that's what he damaged before. Uh, so agility check to make it back onto the island. He does. Boop. Action number two. Besides heal, actually, let me get the buffs I get again. Because that's going to become important as he gets lower health. 30 health. Great. Action number two. Um, shoot tentacle. Twice. Ooh. Which was it? He got an 8 and a 10. The 8 first is 90 damage. 90 Very damage. nice. 90 damage plus 280. Oh! 270 damage. Wow. Okay, he's down to 130 health. Wait, how much did he get total? Did he do? Yeah, how much did he do total? He did uh, 370 of tentacle. <laughs> with, with this the... holy pistol is really is yeah. really pulling. Yeah, really. Um, uh, yeah, that's the enemies again. Okay. Mr. Eldritch Horror. Let's see what else I can pull out of my butt. Mr. Wesley. Um. I'm going to roll another number. I'm going to roll a bigger dice this time. Great. Now, you haven't actually fought these guys yet, but they are 
pretty dead, dead. pretty pretty deadly. One, oh. Two, three. Oh. They will act next turn, of course, but they're there too. Head for him. So he like lets out a gutturally yell as three holes open up. Yeah, and they let out. Uh, <clears throat> uh what's the status of that big uh, white above us? Uh, it's it's pretty big. Well, that's the thing that's bathing this part in light. Oh, so it's it's over the ocean and part of the island. Yeah. So it's slowly moving above us. Yep. Oh, that's so cool. And pretty soon, it's going to bathe this island in light of... Yes, the Martyrs will have their day. What if there's like some kind of secret, like backstory too, that this guy has been like pain in the side for a while? Well, he's a lawyer, so probably. <clears throat> I'm going to uh, yes, continue to, to my you, yeah. incantation. Alrighty. Let's do it. There's a six and a 